Cooler Master's new Master Set MS120 sets you up with a gaming keyboard and mouse for just $89.99. The keyboard features MEM mechanical switches, rubber dome hybrids with a clicky mechanical feel, per-key RGB backlighting, and 9 preset LED modes. The mouse has durable Omron switches, a 3500 DPI PixArt optical sensor, and matching RGB lighting. Click the link in the description for more information. How's it going everybody and welcome back to Paul's Hardware. This is my monthly builds video for September 2017. This is a monthly series that I do every month, that makes sense. And I go over a couple parts lists for computer builds to give you guys suggestions uh, if you're looking to part out a system yourself and you're looking for a little bit of help. Now if you want to see an actual construction of a build, check out my builds playlist and I will fully admit that I have not been following up properly for the past like month and a half on my monthly builds videos. Usually I take one of the builds that I part out and build it during the month and then test it later on in the month, but due to lots of different factors, I've actually not followed up well. So my apologies for that and I'm gonna be trying to uh, catch up this month. I actually have a couple builds at least planned, um, but of course we need your feedback as well. So uh, check out the straw poll linked in the description. If you wanna let me know what builds you want to see in October, and I have uh, a selection here, uh, including a bunch of super towers, because going back to last month, that's what you guys were interested in. Uh, also a scary Halloween computer and, and a couple other options there too, since Intel has some stuff that might be coming out soon, although we're not sure when that's coming out. Now last month I gave you guys a multiple choice option, and actually for this month too, you can choose more than one answer on that survey if you want to. But $1,200 gaming PC was the top one here, and this is actually... I took this to mean you want something more expensive. So I actually went with a bit higher end than $1,200. Uh, also form factor was Super Tower ATX, and this took me by surprise and I was unprepared. So this is why for next month, I actually have potentially a Cooler Master case that I might use uh, for a Super Tower build. So let me know what you think about that. But beyond that, you guys were interested in mini ITX and then uh, the more expensive price ranges rather than the less expensive price ranges that I was asking about. So for this month, I have two builds. We're going to start off with this one here, which is the entry level Threadripper 1900X build, which is a very similar build to the one that I parted out last month. However, now we have the 1900X which lets you get in on the Threadripper platform for $550 for the CPU itself. Now granted it is an 8 core 16 thread CPU, which is the same as you get as the 1800X on the mainstream platform. So if you're investing in something like this, you're really doing it to get access to the high-end features of this platform in general, which means upgrading to potentially a 12 core or a 16 core processor in the future also quad channel memory, also 64 PCI express lanes, so tons of connectivity for other things. My Threadripper 1900X entry level build is around $1,750, $1,725 if you look right now and take into account uh, mail and rebates and that kind of thing. And the idea here is not to build the cheapest possible Threadripper and, uh, TR4 platform uh, build we can, it's to choose parts that are reasonably priced on the lower end since it's entry level, but still reasonable. I'm not pairing this with like a, a GTX 1050 Ti or something like that, and I'm not going with like a single stick of four, four gigs of memory. I have the processor, I have an air cooler, I have an ASRock motherboard, Corsair, full quad channel kit of memory, an SSD, a ten, GTX 1070, and all that good stuff. So, starting off with the processor, the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 1900X, of course, $550. Bear in mind that for not too much more money, just about $250 more, you can upgrade to the 12 core version of this, or you can spend a thousand dollars eventually for an extra 450 and get the 16 core full fat version of Threadripper. But if you really want in on this platform and you don't want to spend all that money, or if you just have great need of extra PCIe lanes, but not necessarily all those cores, then there might be some people who are interested in this processor. Hopefully I will get one to test out as well. Um, and then we have an air cooler for it since um, you can get liquid coolers that do slot in with TR4 really easily, but uh, I wanted to stick with air since uh, it is a little bit cheaper by 10 or 15 bucks, even though the Noctua coolers are fairly expensive. This is the NH-U12S, which they specifically designed for Threadripper, so I should be taking a look at one of these pretty soon. Two, uh, I'm gonna pair this up with the ASRock X399 Tai Chi ATX TR4 motherboard. Still one of the least expensive t uh, Threadripper motherboards, even though it is 335-ish dollars. This one I actually do have on hand right here, ready to go and build with. Uh, Asus is the only other motherboard manufacturer that I could find right now that has a Threadripper motherboard that's in like the 320 to $350 ish range. So check that one out too. But um, this has been out since launch and it's got some pretty good feedback on it already. And I've been looking forward to doing a build with it. So 
For memory storage and video card, I've used a parametric filter on PC Part Picker, which lets you use these filter options here on the left-hand side. So I wanted DDR4, I wanted faster DDR4, because in my opinion, if you're gonna invest in Threadripper or Ryzen, you're gonna want at least 3000 speed memory or something faster. So I chose a few of those options there. I chose a 16 gig kit, four by four gigs, and then I basically just sorted it by price, and it's choosing the lowest price option here, which happens to be a Corsair Vengeance LPX kit for about $165, which is, Man, I hope DDR4 prices come down soon because they have gone up recently rather than down and that kind of sucks. I did somewhat of the same thing for storage. Let's sort actually sort by price over here. However, this time I did a wider range when it comes to the capacity. So capacity here, I'm looking for the 240-ish gig SSDs and the 500 gig-ish SSDs. So I went 160 to 525 there and hope you guys can see this well enough. Chose SSD, of course, uh, and then that was pretty much it there. Um, and then I, again, sorted by price. Here's how you, I'm sorry, I didn't sort by price. I sorted by price per gigabyte that way, um, which you can get down below 30 cents per gigabyte. However, to do that, you need to buy the 500 gig or 480 gig versions, which of course cost not quite twice as much, but um, almost twice as much. The, the cheapest uh, 240 gig one is the SanDisk SSD 240 gig that I chose. It's $84, uh, and yes, you will need additional storage beyond that. Uh, with the motherboard purchase right now with on Newegg, you get a free 120 gig SSD, but my assumption here is that you're gonna get a, a full-size mechanical hard drive, a two terabyte or something like that, and drop it in here as well. Maybe you have a used one or just add one on. It costs usually about 40 to 50 bucks for something like that. Video card. Same general idea. Video card prices are pretty crazy right now still due to cryptocurrency mining and that kind of thing. So GTX 1070, in my opinion, is kind of the sweet spot when it comes to a graphics card that you can get for relatively close to the MSRP. Still very powerful, so matches up with this kind of build without like, you know, just skimping out and going for something that's 100 or 150 bucks. And you can find them for as little as 300 bucks, I'm sorry, 400 bucks right now uh, for the standard Founders Edition one. Zotac also has a mini version that you can get for about 420-ish dollars. So the cheapest 1070 you could find is basically what I was going for with this one. Uh, for the case, I went with a budget case. I was looking for a case in the 60 to $70 range. The Graphite Series 230T is a great option here. I was also looking at the Cooler Master Master Box, which is a, a good option. Uh, NZXT S340 would be an easy choice here as well. There's lots of really good options in the 60, 70 ish dollar range. I didn't want to go down to the 50 buck range because you start getting into some really kind of budget annoyances down there. But the 230T, solid case, comes with fans, plenty of ventilation, which I was also uh, keen on. And then it's also got a solid side panel window, which uh, I was also interested in because I'm not really interested in color coordination for this build. I don't care about the LEDs. I don't care that we have a Noctua fan with hideous Noctua colors in there. Uh, all that matters is the performance and getting yourself a Threadripper build for a reasonably low price. Uh, the power supply went slightly overkill on. There's a 650 watt version of this Corsair CX series, the newly revamped for 2017 with a all black aesthetic as well as all black cables, uh, which is super nice. Thank you Corsair for providing this option. And uh, I went with the 750 watt version just to give us a little bit more headroom for this entire build since there's so much expandability options here, you wanna have plenty of uh, wattage available to you. So the 750 watt version is what I went for. And even with the, it's, it's only 55 bucks. I mean, why would you not? It's also 80 plus bronze. I also opted to go with the 80 plus bronze because you can get a much better deal on a power supply. And while, whereas long term you can save a few bucks on your power bill by going with an 80 plus gold or something like that, 80 plus bronze will get you by, get you something that will function. And you know it's at least rated well enough for 80 plus bronze efficiency. So there it is, my entry level Threadripper 1900X build about $1,750. Definitely not budget, but still entry level when it comes to a high-end desktop platform, and uh, you're gonna get a lot of power for that money too. Next up is my super portable gaming PC. This is an AMD build as well, although it's on the mainstream platform with the Ryzen 5 1600 processor. It's about $1,150. It is portable, it is powerable, powerful, powerful. It is meant for both gaming as well as uh, doing workstation stuff since it's got a six core processor. Could handle gaming and streaming as well and with some add-ons. Uh, could even be a capture system uh, as I parted out last month since this is kind of a, a rehashing of the system that I built last month because what happened was I realized the system I was going to build last month I actually wanted to do something with. So I'm doing actually a pay it forward build uh, for our good friend Rachel, who I don't know if you guys remember, but back when I worked at Newegg and did Newegg TV, uh, Rachel was our coworker there. She did a lot of writing for the Yoke Show and that kind of thing. So she is actually going 
overseas to, to work for a while. And I don't want to give too many details about what she's doing, but she needed a new system. She needed an upgrade. It's been quite a while. She games and she does workstation stuff and she might stream as well. So that's what this is all built around. So for the case, we wanted something that was super portable, which is why I went with the Silverstone case. And this is the version that has a handle that goes on top, although I just haven't mounted that up yet. So I'm going to be providing most of the components for this build and then Rachel actually purchased the graphics card, the case, and the power supply since those were the only things that I didn't have spares of around for her to use. Uh, Alright, so $1,150. Here's the rest of the parts here. Let's go over them one at a time really quick. Starting off with the Ryzen 5 1600 proce processor. Six core processor, insanely popular. You can get it for sub $200 right now. It will come with a CPU cooler in the box, although I'm planning on using the Cryo Rig C7 provided the uh, AM4 mounting kit actually, I'm sorry, yeah, the C7, provided the mounting kit arrives in time. That's the only thing I'm I'm still waiting on. Cryrig is sending me that directly. Uh, I was trying to order it other places, but this is a nice low profile cooler. I used this on my HTPC for quite some time. It does a really good job and uh, I think I think it, uh, I think it'll be a good choice for this one. Uh, however, it does need an AM4 upgrade kit, which Cryrig has. This is a, a part of their website where they list those, as well as the different coolers that they have and the different mounting kits that go with them. The uh, C7 requires the AM4 upgrade kit type C, which they didn't have on Newegg, so I couldn't order it. So hopefully that arrives soon. If not, we'll go with the stock cooler and, and that'll do just fine as well. Uh, for a motherboard, of course, there's only a couple mini ITX AM4 motherboards that are available. This is the AB350N Gaming Wi-Fi from Gigabytes. Uh, and, and there it is. Nice, solid, compact little motherboard. Tons of stuff wedged into it there. Um, so it's gonna be, uh, a tight build, as lots of mini ITX builds typically go. Um, this is a solid board for about $115, and of course, got to maintain the mini ITX form factor. I used the same, or roughly the same, memory parametric filter option that I did in the previous build, so I just went with a 16 gig kit, 2 by 8 gigs this time, which you can get for a bit less, apparently, $134.99 for that, so two by, for, for the 2 by 8 gigs. I don't know why the 4 by 4 gig kits are so much more expensive, but anyway, there you go. You get DDR4 3000 for that. I'm probably going to use a kit I already have on hand here, but this is uh, my solution for you guys that uh, that need to actually hunt down some memory to use. For an SSD, I have the same SSD because I used the same method from the first build to find an SSD, and this is the most reasonably priced 240 gig. Uh, you know, it's a sand disk and it's 84 bucks, so there you go. Uh, for a graphics card, I also have the Zotac GeForce GTX 1070 8 gig mini. Uh, this one was partially because it is mini and it is a mini ITX build, although this case does support fairly lengthy graphics cards. Um, the length is, is more of a concern than the, the width, I guess, is the thickness. No, that's, that's, anyway. Point is, you can get this one for about $415, $420. Uh, it's rare to find 1070s that are sub 400 bucks right now, um, but this one should be a good choice for us. It is also overclocked a little bit, I believe, and it's got two uh, big fans on it. So since this case actually does have plenty of ventilation right there on the side, as well as a filter uh, for the intake for the graphics card, uh, some of the reviews, I haven't used this case yet, but several of the reviews said that they thought a uh, open style fan would work better than a blower style fan in this case just because it's got that plenty of airflow and uh, heat buildup in a mini ITX system is something that should be you should be a little bit concerned about. So there's the case, the ML08B-H. The dash H means it comes with a handle attachment that goes up on top. Just an extra piece that they put in the box that you screw on there so that will make it a little bit more portable. I told Rachel that she, uh, if she's planning on taking a computer overseas, you should definitely make sure it's, si it's of a size that can fit into carry-on luggage because you do not want to check a fully built computer. Uh, you want to make sure that it's in your hands as much as possible. Uh, but nice little case, USB 3.0 and everything like that. Uh, it's only about 80 bucks. Uh, moving on for a power supply. Actually, well, there's another look at the case. We already did that. Uh, finally, the power supply. We needed SFX since it's a small form factor case that uh, only supports SFX power supplies. We went with the Sil Silverstone 500 watt version of this. Uh, pretty solid little power supply. Gets the job done. I don't like the blue. I don't like the blue plug. I don't know. I wish they would get rid of that single blue plug but other than that you know it's all black cabling and it's all flat black cables uh, which I might be able to show you guys here in just a second all flat black cables um, which should look good not that uh, aesthetics are too much of a concern here but also the flat black cabling very useful for routing and pushing up against stuff in a case where you have not much room to work with and you might need to be creative with where you actually store those cables but guys, that's all for this video. This has been my monthly builds video for September 2017. I'm going to be building both of these systems this month. 
pinky swear. And uh, I'll be working on those actually pretty quick. I actually also have my Arctic Panther water cool build that I'm going to be doing this month too. So stay tuned for that. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and links to uh, the full builds list on PC Part Picker in the video description. As well as links to all of the parts individually if you want to check any of them out at retail. Most of them are Amazon links by the way. Uh, thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you next time.